Hey guys, in this video, we are going to uh, go through the checklist for live stream and show you how to um, conduct an entire mass live on Facebook. So first on the list is equipment. So right in this cabinet, uh, don't be alarmed if the soundboard is on. It pretty much stays on all the time. So uh, the laptop resides on this shelf right here. Uh, s normally sitting on top of it, you'll find the video converter. We'll hook that up in a moment. Uh, next is the power supply for the laptop. It's this brick and it will be plugged into this power supply. If for some reason it, it were unplugged, you would want to make sure, um, because it seems like not all of these work, uh, you would want to make sure that you did get a live one when you plug in the laptop power. So this guy goes right in the uh, right hand side of the laptop, just like that. Okay, so the first items on the checklist are connect the laptop cables, uh, network and power. So we got the power here, the network is this yellow one, and it's going to go right here on the side of the laptop on the on the left side there it is this little door which has to drop down a little bit and then you can hear it click when it goes in next is the video encoder which we pulled out of the cabinet a minute ago and the audio converter which Nick keeps right here beside the soundboard. The audio converter gets its signal from the soundboard. It's this uh, XLR cable. It goes right into the number two uh, output on the back of the soundboard till it clicks. And then this end goes into the, it goes right on this large plug right there. Uh, coming out of the Audio converter is this USB cable, and it goes right into the left side of the laptop right here. So that covers the sound. Next, it's time to hook up the video converter. This beautiful little magic box, and underneath this is where we keep these two cables. There's a USB, and there's this very fragile looking little uh, adapter cable, which we need to be, take very careful uh, precautions with that we don't damage it. So here is the, uh, the coax. Uh, it's an SDI cable that comes directly from the camera. So this carries the video signal from the camera. We have to plug our little adapter cable into it. Now this is a twist and lock fitting right here. In and twist. So that's in and twist to the right. Righty tighty. Uh, this goes into the round port on the end of the video converter, and then on the other end is the USB. So it's self-explanatory. In goes the blue USB cable. You can just lay it back here, and then into the side of the laptop, we have the video and the audio USB cables side by side. Everything's connected to the laptop. We've got the power, we've got the network, that's the yellow one, and then we've got the two USBs, one for the audio and one for the video coming from the camera. Now we can turn on the laptop. Uh, Hill wrote the login for us on here. So in, in this display right here, you can see all three um, programs that we use to run the mass. This one in the middle is the streaming software we call Slobs, Streamlabs OBS. Behind it, I have the PTZ camera control app. That's where we have the shot presets that moves the camera. And then behind that still, I have the Facebook producer page. You can switch between apps using the Alt tab keystroke or you can simply click the icons. If you prefer to use the toolbar at the bottom to switch between apps, the little black camera icon right here 
is the PTZ Optics control app. That's the one we use to change the presets, which moves the camera. Uh, the Chrome icon is the one we use to access the Facebook producer page, really only before mass and after mass. The green icon, that is Streamlabs OBS, or SLOBS. That's the streaming software that we use to control the, the, uh, the, the, the scenes and the sources. Here we go. Let's see this checklist. So the first thing we're going to open on the checklist is the uh, PTZ Optics Controller app. This is going to show us that the camera is in fact working. I need to click on the Window tab and I want to select Preview Window. Then, because it wants to occupy the entire screen, I'm going to hit this little snap button right here in the corner. What that does then is it ties the preview window to the control panel for the camera. Now I have to, in order to connect to our camera, I have to select camera one. At this point you can barely see because it's kind of dark uh, in the church right now, but it is showing the, uh, the main altar shot, what we call shot number one. Okay, next thing on the checklist is we're actually going to now open the uh, Facebook producer page in the Chrome browser. If you get any kind of error here, like what I'm seeing right now, that's okay. Click on Facebook St. Luke CP shortcut. Now we have the St. Luke Facebook page and I simply click on the live button. Now I'm going to enter the video title. Over here on the left side, under St. Luke Catholic Church, we can just enter Sunday Mass and the date. Under the main title window, there's also a description window. I also copy and paste into that one the same video title. Sometimes that helps it to be more visible during the live stream. Okay, next on the checklist is to open the streaming software. It's called Streamlabs OBS. Uh, you can abbreviate that as slobs. It's on the desktop. It's the green icon here. I recommend you right mouse click on it and then select Run as Administrator. Doing that helps the laptop to allocate more processing resources toward those functions. Deborah turned on the lights for us, so now we have a beautiful shot of the altar. On the left side are three scenes that are prepared. A splash screen, which is what we do before Mass, when there might be people setting up, and we don't want to show that. We just show, show the image of the, of the big, beautiful crucifix with the, with the colored stained glass light on it. The second one is called Live Stream Feed. That's, that's where we operate mostly during, during the entire length of the Mass. Uh, the third one is, is a pre-recorded video file. This is when we're going to play like a witness talk. That, that has been videotaped or recorded ahead of time. So on the second one, live stream feed, in the middle now under sources, the second one down is Psalm text. So when I click on the little eyeball character right here to show it, that's when we get to actually see it appear now on the screen so that the viewers at home uh, are able to follow along and recite the responsorial psalm. So we simply can turn it on and off by clicking that eyeball. If I need to change the psalm uh, for, for the next Sunday, there's this little gear icon right here above the sources. And right in the middle, I can now enter the new text for the responsorial psalm of the day. And I usually do it right before Mass, so it's not a problem. It's very quick and easy to do. Once you've changed that text, go ahead and hit Done. I have some spaces in front of the first quotes and some spaces behind the last quote, quotation marks. And that helps to, to provide a little spacing on the screen. So I recommend not deleting those or changing those. Just work between the quotes to change your text. And you can hit Done like that. And now you will have your new text showing up here. Go ahead and click the little eyeball next to it to turn off that text until you need it when the uh, canter steps up to the ambo. Now, typically, before Mass, 
when uh, the cantor is practicing and Patrick is practicing along with them, uh, there's enough music in the sound system during that warm up that you will see this audio meter registering. It'll be jumping across from left to right, showing bright green. When the sounds they're making are loud enough, uh, it'll, it'll go into the yellow range and, and maybe even into the, the orange or red range uh, if, if the sound gets loud enough. If they are doing that and you don't see it registering at all, check to see if it's been muted. There's a little speaker button right there next to the slider. Uh, if that's good, sometimes what you have to do is check and make sure that the, de the device, this, this audio converter, uh, is actually registered correctly. So the way to do it is click the little gear icon next to it right here and go to Properties. Next to Device, there's a pull-down. Select Option. The one to select is microphone, USB, audio, codec. Select that one and hit done. And you've verified that the sound coming into this streaming software is the correct one coming from this audio converter. At this point, we're ready to click the Go Live button. This does not mean we're broadcasting. This simply means we are now sending our transmission to the Facebook producer page. Let's switch back to the Chrome browser. And we should see in this little preview window right here that our image is, in fact, coming through. And there it is. There's the altar. So that's our first check that everything is working correctly. Now let's go back to SLOBS, the Streamlabs OBS streaming software. And we're going to activate the splash screen. There it is. And I should see it appear several seconds later on the Facebook producer page. There it is. Perfect. I need to switch back to the streaming software because at this time when we're getting ready to, to activate the live stream on Facebook, if preparations are still being made at the front of the church and maybe there's people talking, we want to mute our audio so that when we go live, those conversations are not heard by the viewers. So I merely click on the little speaker icon right next to the slider, right next to the volume slider. When I do that, it shows crossed out. At this point, I can now come back to the Facebook producer page. Is it 10 minutes to mass? Yes, it is. I now click go live and then we are broadcasting, but we're broadcasting only the sp splash screen and we're broadcasting silently because I muted the audio input device. That's our audio converter. I muted it. Once I get the signal that Patrick is ready, sometimes I'll actually go up and ask him once he's ready to begin playing so that we have that nice uh, um, lead, lead in music before mass. Uh, then I will actually come right here on the slobs and unmute and immediately you will see that sound meter registering jumping across from left to right as he begins to play and because we had gone live on the Facebook producer page the viewers now see this splash screen and they hear Patrick playing the piano at about two minutes to nine the altar servers are going to get ready to uh, stand in the doorway of the sacristy. When I see them appear, it's now time for me to turn off the splash screen. The viewers will then see the main shot of the altar. So I simply change my scene here on the left side from splash screen to live stream feed. We now have the main altar shot. 
Let's change over to the P2Z controller app and we'll change the, the camera shot to show the uh, entrance of, uh, to the sacristy where the altar servers are waiting. So with the altar servers in position, I now want to click on preset number two. This moves the, the camera to the entrance shot. You can see the camera zoom in and pan left over to the uh, sacristy doors. At this point, Father Brad will be checking on his iPhone to see uh, if the Facebook live stream uh, is in fact showing that the camera operator is ready and that Facebook is working. He will then give the signal to the cantor who will give the signal to the pianist uh, that they can begin the entrance antiphon. Once the altar servers and the lector and father begin their entrance, they will come all around the side of the baptismal font here, all the way to the very end. Then they will pass in front of it. Right about the time that Father gets to the end of the baptismal font, it's time to return to shot number one, the main altar. Click on preset number one, and the camera will follow Father, and it'll pan across to the center shot. He will then step up onto the altar and the servers will continue past. At this point in the mass, there won't be too many more camera movements. Zooming in during the homily is gonna be the only other one that's strongly encouraged. There are some optional ones which we will cover. We'll have the first reading, then it's time for the responsorial psalm. During the first reading, Make sure you switch over to the streaming software. Because by the time the cantor approaches the ambo, we need to be ready to turn on the psalm text. When the cantor steps up to the ambo, they will recite the psalm once. And then the second time, they will indicate that it's time for us to join in. This is when I turn on the little eyeball icon right here to display the song on the screen. It's optional to turn it on and off uh, for every verse. If you, the camera operator, is not confident in that timing, just leave it on for the entire psalm uh, process. I tend to like to turn it on and off each time, but it's not required. So if you want to do that, fine. Otherwise, at the end of the psalm, when the candor steps away from the eyeball, go ahead and click that eye, eyeball icon again to turn off the psalm text. We will then have the second reading, and then Father will step up to the ambo to uh, read the gospel. I normally do not zoom in during the gospel reading. I save that for the homily. The reason is, is because I don't want to distract from the gospel reading. I want to keep this sort of broad-based scene. Someone isn't, isn't focused on Father's face or watching him. They're just listening to the reading. By the time he finishes and reaches for his notes, that's when I will select shot preset number three. And it's called the AMBO. When I click that, you can see the camera zoom in tight for the up close ambo shot. And this can stay here during the entire homily. When Father finishes and you see him tucking his notes uh, in the shelf below, this is a great time to come back to preset shot number one, main altar. The camera will then uh, zoom out and pan and bring you back to the main altar shot. That's the end of the required camera motions. Uh, it's optional if the operator is confident and comfortable. Uh, you could also zoom in to the altar 
uh, during the consecration of the bread and wine. I wait to zoom in uh, for that uh, until I hear the first bell. That's when Father places his hands over the gifts. Uh, the server rings the first bell. At that moment, I will use shot preset number four, altar close up. At this time, Father uh, consecrates the gifts and blesses them and gives thanks. Uh, and then he's going to hold them up for us to do uh, what, what is called the great amen. At that moment, I begin zooming out by returning to preset number one, main altar. At this point, we will all together recite the Lord's Prayer, the, the Our Father. The only other optional uh, shots would be in case Father wanted to do uh, after Mass announcements, which he always does, but again, this is optional. We have preset shot number five called Father's Chair. So this is after Mass is nearly over. And I see him preparing to stand and make announcements. This preset will zoom in on his standing position. It's not focusing right now because he's not there to catch the uh, camera's eye, so to speak. When his announcements are done and he steps toward the altar to prepare for the exit procession, I would then return to shot number one, main altar. At this point, again, you have the option to keep this as your closing shot with no more movements. Or, if you're comfortable, you can uh, use shot preset number two, which is not only for entrance, but also for exit. Uh, as Father and the servers uh, line up here, prepare to leave, you then see Father begin to step away. About the time he gets in front of the ambo, I'm going to click preset number two. For the exit and it will follow him across past, past the baptismal font he will then turn and go into the sacristy patrick is still playing music and the and the cantors probably still singing at this point so even though they have all disappeared i will now return to shot preset number one which takes us back to the main altar and i will stay there until the music ends when i sense that that music is almost finished, I return back to slobs because here is where I'm going to end the, the live stream. I've heard the music stop. I now click end stream. And about three seconds later, I will see Facebook also um, depart from live, just like that, just like it just did right there. At this point, the last thing to do on the Facebook producer page It's not displaying right now, but there's going to be a little arrow uh, which suggests to continue. And you do want to click that little arrow. It will then, Facebook will then save that video onto the St. Luke Facebook page. At this point, we're done. We, we can now actually close all three of these. It'll save its data and we're done. At this point, I'm going to shut down the computer. Okay, at this point, I can uh, uh, start unplugging all the cables. Uh, the laptop has been shut down. So, first the power cable, and we just tuck it back in underneath. Uh, next is the two USBs, one for audio, one video. So first the audio. Nick prefers to leave it connected to the audio converter. So we will simply unplug the large XLR cable. We'll stow that in a moment. And Nick has been uh, tucking it in to the side of the uh, soundboard here. The XLR cable, we can unplug it. And I think Nick might be getting a shorter one for this since it's a little more than we need. Uh, but at this point, he was okay with simply leaving it on top of the cabinet. 
for the uh, video converter, again, be very careful with this delicate conversion cable. We're going to uh, push and twist to unlock from the SDI. You may have to pull a little bit uh, to get it to come off. There's actually uh, one of those coax needles on the inside. And then this is just going to get tucked in behind the soundboard. And that was twist to the left to unlock it. Uh, next, we want to remove the small end from the video converter. Uh, again, can't emphasize enough how delicate this little guy is, but this thing is vital to making the entire operation work. So we're going to stow it carefully in the box along with the blue USB cable, then the plastic tray over those, and the video converter sits right in it. Slide over the cover, unplug the yellow network cable. It has a little pin underneath, which you have to push to remove it. Then the laptop and the uh, video converter can come down under the soundboard onto the empty shelf. Tuck the network cable in behind the soundboard. And at this point, the uh, entire cabinet drawer can be closed. Just check to make sure none of the cables are getting caught. That way everything's gonna work just the way we need it to next time. And that's it.